Hi, Matt Fitzgibbons from PatriotMusic.com here. When we think about the people of the American Revolution, we usually focus on the heroes, the people we call our founding fathers. People like George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Patrick Henry, James Madison, George Mason, the list goes on, but it's finite. It's natural to do that. History loves to focus on individuals and to tell their stories and to try to give the reader an understanding of the entire revolution around the lives of a few singular individuals. But when we do that, we kind of lose sight of what the entire revolution was about. All of the anonymous men, women, and children who had singular or multiple acts of heroism or sacrifice that together contributed to taking on and defeating the largest military in the history of the planet. These people whose names we'll never know. But also I think there are two reasons why we tend to do this. The first is that from a military perspective, from a propaganda, a strategic perspective, the British needed to have individuals because it's much harder to kill an idea. As a matter of fact, it's almost impossible. So finding, arresting, prosecuting, and executing individuals could be used as marks of success in quelling the rebellion. And the British were actually not very good at this, probably because the revolution was an idea that was so widespread. But the second reason is that the British aristocracy simply couldn't comprehend the notion that average people could have this idea that their station in life was not what the aristocracy thought it should be. They should be happy being lower in life than the aristocracy. Some people were born wealthy with power, other people were born at the bottom, and everyone should be happy with that. But this idea of the American Revolution was based on the concept that from the lowliest person in the street all the way up to the king himself had essentially the same rights and that they had to follow the same laws. But in terms of groups of people, there's one group that has been completely overlooked in American history and in influencing the American Revolution, the Irish people. Benjamin Franklin, the printer, writer, inventor, scientist, and statesman, is one of those individuals around whom the significance of the Irish and Scots-Irish is clear. Another is Philadelphia lawyer John Galloway, Franklin's close friend and confidant, who was a member of the First Continental Congress. The American colonists were proud to be subjects of the British Crown in Great Britain, which they considered to be the freest people at the time, especially with their tradition of common law. But Irish Americans saw all of these infringements in a different light. They had lived under British tyranny and racism all of their lives before coming to America, mostly as indentured servants. Despite all of the increasing infringements on their natural rights and their rights as Englishmen, as the American colonists saw it, up until the spring of 1776, few Americans supported independence from Great Britain. In the mid-1770s, the British escalated their abuses of the Irish people, particularly through what was called rack-renting practices, where aristocratic landlords, most of whom didn't even live in Ireland, waited for their tenants' leases to expire, and then drastically increased the rents, leaving tens of thousands of people homeless and in poverty. And while the American colonists were proud of their rights as Englishmen and sought reconciliation with England, the Irish people in Ireland had no habeas corpus and their British-appointed parliament had no term, though it was seven years in England. In fact, one Irish parliament lasted 33 years. In the early 1770s, Catholics made up 70% of the population in Ireland, but owned only 5% of the land. They weren't allowed to vote, serve in the military, marry Protestants, be educated, or bear arms, even in self-defense, in their own country. In 1771, while Franklin was in England, he traveled to Ireland and wrote to his friend Joseph Galloway about what he saw. Quote, The lower people in that unhappy country are in a most wretched situation through the restraints on their trade and manufacturers. Their houses are dirty hovels of mud and straw, their clothing rags and their food little more beside potato. Perhaps three quarters of the inhabitants are in this situation." Unquote. When independence was declared though, while Franklin supported it, his friend Galloway went over to the British side and returned to England in 1778, leaving almost all of his assets in America. 
So he was an extremely objective source when he testified before a committee of the House Commons in England in 1779 that at the beginning of the revolt, less than one-fifth of Americans had independence in mind, and that the Continental Army had less than a quarter natives of America, meaning born in America. Half were Irish, and the other quarter Scottish and English. Not only had huge numbers of Irish and Scots-Irish immigrated from Ireland and fought the British in America's war for independence in most likely every major battle, they'd served as a voice long before the Revolution, warning Americans exactly what the British had in mind for the American colonies. And they certainly did this in the tens of thousands, though we'll never know their names. So next St. Patrick's Day, don't just think about green beer and parades with giant leprechaun floats. Think about the contribution that the Irish people made to the American Revolution and freedom in general. I'm Matt Fitzgibbons from PatriotMusic.com. Thanks.